Working class Americans or people employed in manual labor, the service industry, or clerical jobs almost never go on to hold political office in the United States. In fact, if millionaires formed their own political party, that party would make up only about 3% of the general public, but it would have control of all three branches of the federal government. The Millionaire's Party would be the majority party in the House of Representatives, and they would have a filibuster-proof supermajority in the Senate. The Millionaire's Party would have a majority on the Supreme Court, and the Millionaire's Party would have a commander-in-chief in the White House. Not just any millionaire, but a full-fledged billionaire. On the other hand, if working class Americans formed their own party, that party would make up more than half of the country, and it's been like this uh, at least since the start of the 20th century. But legislators from that party, we'll call them the working class party, they have never held more than 2% of the seats in Congress. So there's this huge economic gulf between politicians and the people they represent. I call that white collar government, and it has serious consequences for our democratic process. So why do we have a white collar government in the first place? That's what my new book explores. I hope you'll check it out.